I've been asked a lot as a pastor how it is we Lutherans can say that baptism saves us. After all, so the saying goes, Jesus is the one that saves. Only God can forgive sins. Well, this is true. I'm not going to disagree with that. It is very plain in Scripture that God's forgiveness is the forgiveness that really counts when it comes to having a righteous standing before Him. But so that we don't take my word for it, let's go to God's own word. We're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. St. Peter writes, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. Thus far, St. Peter. Peter makes a comparison here between Noah and the ark and the act of baptism. And just so we remember, Noah was the guy that built the big boat, the big ark, and he was delivered through the flood that God sent to destroy all of the sinful flesh of this world. Noah was delivered not because he was free from sin, but because he was faithful to God and trusted in him and did as the Lord had said. And lest we think that Noah's act of obedience was the thing that saved him, we must remember that it was God himself who sealed the door of the ark and kept Noah and his family safe inside of it. We can see the parallel here with baptism that Peter tries to make. Just as water was used to deliver Noah and his family, that by faith they might be saved, so too water is used to deliver us so that by faith we might be saved. This baptism, though, is different than ritual washings and floods in the Old Testament. It doesn't come to cleanse the dirt off of the body or wipe away evil from the face of the earth. No, this comes to give us a clear and good conscience. And how does this do that? Well, like Peter says, Christ suffered once for the sins of the unrighteous so that we might be brought to God. The death itself might be put to flight. And now when we are baptized into Christ, our conscience is clear. We can stand before God with a clear conscience because we have been hand-delivered the saving blood of Jesus Christ. The real question people have to ask is, where do I receive what Jesus died for me to have? And this is exactly why he gives us the gift of baptism, so that through water and the word of God, our consciences would be cleansed of all stain and sin, that we would be given forgiveness and life everlasting, and we would know for sure that it has been handed to us. You see, baptism saves because it's Christ's baptism. It's not my act as the pastor. It's not your act as the person being baptized, but it is the act of our Lord Jesus Christ who by water and his word redeems us, gives us new life, and brings us into himself so that we might receive all the benefits of his death now and forever.